five to fifty feet wide and they're all about eight to ten feet deep. Right here on our right, where these men are working. This big grass field, this is where the original 13 huts would have been located and where the cabins we just visited would have started and expanded to where they are today. So you'll kind of get a view of it, but since they're out there setting up for tomorrow, this is the best view you can get of that big field. This line of oak trees, everything to the left of it would have been rice fields and you can still somewhat see right here the ditch that used to be the old canal that they filled back in running throughout the property. So in 1865, Reverend Drayton came back to Magnolia and he was told you can keep your land, you just need to pay all the back taxes and keep associated with it. The taxes that he didn't pay when he was a part of the Confederacy. Well, Reverend Drayton was broke, so all of his money in the Confederate cause, and then they lost the Confederate bonds were on the paper they were printed on. So we need to have to sell the majority of his family's property, including 1,500 acres of Magnolia, in order to pay back his back taxes. But he was able to do so, and he was able to keep 500 acres, so 500 acres remains today, and included the gardens that they had already begun to cultivate. With Magnolia opened in 1870, he arrived via steamship along the Ashton River. But as buggies and carriages became more popular, popular he started to get roads out here. Once we started to get roads out here, they planted this line of oak trees we're about to enter known as the Avenue of Oaks. It provides a very nice shade and took the rest to drive up to the house and is very common on plantations throughout the southeast. So some of our trees look a little worse for wear. Hurricane Matthew this past October, the thousand year flood, the October before that, both did some damage. But Hurricane Hugo did do most damage. September 1989, massive hurricane did about $5 billion of damage to South Carolina. Here it would take down about 900 trees, 120 of them being Virginia live oak trees. And it would also take down numerous very large limbs of these Virginia live oak trees. So you can still see the damage to them today. But one tree that fell over during Hugo, coming up on our right, she's probably my favorite tree on the property. She fell over during Hugo and they thought she was dead, but part of her root system stayed intact and she's continued to grow and thrive and produce foliage every year has a very unique growth pattern. She's growing from the side of the tree because the side of the tree is now the top of the tree. But she has been on her side this September for 28 years and she is still alive. Oh. 402,000 of them were enslaved. The only other state with that kind of ratio was the state of Mississippi. South Carolina and Mississippi would be the first two states to succeed from the Union. Twelve U.S. presidents were slave owners. Eight of them owned slaves while they were president of the United States. So coming up here on our left, this is our horticultural maze. This maze is the miniaturized version of a maze King Henry VIII had built his castle in England. The Drayton's were a fan of it, so they had a miniaturized version built right here on the property. I'm going to stop in front of the house. If you have a house or a boat tour next, you can get off here if you'd like. For your house tour, you'll just go right up the stairs and went out the veranda or the porch for your tour guide. For your boat tour, you'll go around the back of the house and you'll walk all the way down until you hit the Ashley River. When you hit the Ashley River, you'll take a left and keep walking and the boats will be on your right. If your next tour is train regular, it'll be the nature train that is actually right in front of us. And you can get on that at the train you go, but I do believe there is about a 30 minute break between this tour and the next one. Cypress Pond to our left, over Cypress Pond, is our famous elongated white bridge. This bridge was built in 1841 and is considered to be one of the most photographed bridges in the South. So if you would like to get off here, you can.
this is the Peacock Cafe. As you can see, if you look straight across, you can see the house. And of course, the peacock. And down there are the miniature horses. And the cafe. Get it. Butterflies are just putting on a show. <clears throat> now that's a butterfly garden. Those are my husband's feet making all that noise. <laughs> 